Welcome to today's Let's Talk, Too Young to Be Old, How to Stay Vibrant and Visible at Any Age. Um, I am so sick of ageism that pervades our society today. Um, I remember I was on Instagram or so, uh, or so, and I was looking at this post, and it was a 30-year-old, and she was saying how she felt like she was too old and um, to kind of like pursue her dreams. And it's, I mean, 30, right? Like we're, we're making people feel old at 30, that it's too late. And it's really indicative of the culture, um, our culture that really glorifies the youth, right? Um, we always hear about the Zuckerbergs and the 20 year old startups, but the reality is that the average age of business founders hovers over uh, around 40. And according to research conducted by MIT professor Pierre Azule, who analyzed 2.7 million people who founded companies between 2007 and 2014, he found that founders were the most successful at age 50 and that they were twice as most likely to experience a successful exit that compared to those founders who were in their 30s. And during the last micro learning that I had with Diane Gilman, um, I found some nuggets of history that is worth repeating today as well. There are so many successful entrepreneurs and founders who started their companies who created and created their personal brands at a later age. For example, renowned fashion designer, designer Vera Wang didn't design her first dress until she was 40. Henry Ford was 45 when he created the Model T car. Julia Childs didn't write her first cookbook till she was close to 50. Ray Kroc, the McDonald's magnet, was a traveling salesman selling milkshake mixers to drugstores at the age of 50. When he met Dick and Mac McDonald's who owned a small self-service bur burger joint and he convinced them to franchise their business. By age 63, Ray Kroc opened 400 restaurants in 44 states. Writer Harry Bernstein authored countless rejected books before getting his first hit at age 96. And one of my favorite success stories is Colonel Sanders. Uh, Harlan Sanders held a number of jobs before 50, including farmer, fireman, insurance salesman, and streetcar conductor. At 40, he began running a Kentucky service station where he offered fried chicken to hungry patrons. By 1935, uh, Sanders' recipe became so regionally famous that the governor honored him with an official Kentucky Colonel title. The Colonel franchised in 1952 at the age of 62, and he was in his 70s when he sold his interest in KFC for $2 million. Which leads me to the amazing Diane Gilman, who I will be introducing soon. I haven't told her this yet, but um, you know, it was almost a, exactly a year when um, when I had Diane as a guest uh, for our Let's Talk for Community of Seven. I also want to thank our mutual friend Will Sullivan for introducing us. He introduced, uh, he reached out to me and said, "You have to meet Diane," and he was absolutely right. Um, it had been probably year one or maybe year two of the pandemic, and I was in a funk. Um, I was wearing the same tired sweatpants and black shirt that had become my uniform. I barely combed my hair, uh, let alone brush my teeth. It was kind of one of those like giving up on things. I felt blah. Um, I mean, nod your head if you kind of went through that during the pandemic. But I think the part of it too was I was feeling old, like old. My hair was graying. Um, There's a lot of stories that I was telling myself. I'm too old. I'm a mom now. Um, and so when I talked to Diane and interviewed her last year, she motivated me and inspired me so much. I actually ended up growing out my grays and really celebrating it. I love my hair now. Um, I retired my sweatpants and started to dress up. Um, there's actually a funny story. I have all this clothes in my you know, closet that I never wore. And now there are days where I dress up and I don't go anywhere but I put on my makeup, I do my hair, I will wear a nice suit and jacket because I realized that I'm not dead yet, <laughs> right? But I was acting like 
it was the end for me, right? Because it didn't matter how I looked. And I realized that, you know, it's not too late, right? And so seeing Diane and how gorgeous and amazing she is in her 70s inspired me. Um, so quick activity before I introduce her. Two questions that I'm going to be asking in the chat. Okay, so type it in, but don't press send until I tell you. For those who are watching this via live stream, put it in the comments, answer in the comments, okay? So first question, how many of you feel that your age limits you, whether internally or externally? So whether you, you're limited by the external world or by yourself? So answer that in the chat. How many feel you uh, that age limits you? Five, four, three, two, one, press send. Okay. So let me see. We have a few answers. Yes, a few no's, somewhat. Uh, a lot of yes, external, no limits internally, limited, limited by the external world. That's it, um, I, I'm seeing that a lot. Um, so next question. Uh, that I have for you. Name one of the most, uh, oh, sorry. If age wasn't a factor, what do you dream of doing? If age was not a factor, what do you dream of doing? Put it in the chat. I'm going to count down five, four, three, two, one, press send. Sky's the limit, guys. If age wasn't a limit, um, living abroad. I love that. Age is just a number. Coaching. And she is coaching. Owning a bookstore. Becoming the first female pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> I love that. Um, having a different career. Um, owning a bookstore. Going to law school. Interior design. Snowboarding. Oh, I love this. Being a gymnast. <laughs> Doing a backflip. Jeffrey wants to do a backflip. I think he still can do it, right? <laughs> Opening a business for literacy. Oh gosh, this is so awesome. I love, thank you so much for sharing this guys. Um, and um, I think you guys are all gonna be inspired um, by Diane and her story. Let me um, pin her right now. Give me one second while I find her. Uh, and so I can pin her. We have so many uh, guests that it's hard to find. I'm going to pin you right now. OK, awesome. Hi, Diane. How's it going? So um, I am so excited to introduce our guest for today. Diane Gilman is also known as the Jean Queen. Uh, she is now taking on her new title, which is author. And I'm going to say best selling author as well. Uh, Diane Gilman went on to be credited. She's credited as the first designer to introduce washable silk in the US, um, which brought her to fashion department stores and brought millions of devoted followers. However, nothing can compare to the huge global recognition she's realized as one of the foundational fashion pioneers of um, Teller Retail. She has spent the past 27 years on HSN, the longest running fashion uh, personality. Her fashions has appeared on HSN in the USA, the Shopping Channel, Canada, QVC UK, QVC Italia, QVC France, TVSN Australia. Her first book was published in 2013, Good Jeans, um, which was Diane's autobiography written and dedicated to the baby boomer generation. She has a second book coming out that I'll talk about in a second. She now continues to blog for HuffPost 50 and has garnered an incredible repertoire of press, including interviews by Charlie Rose on CBS, New York Times with Kathy Horn, and the list goes on. She owns all of her current success to one light bulb moment when she decided to create a very unique fit in denim based on catering to the baby boomers figure um, with close fitting sexy yet comfortable jeans with universal appeal. Her innovative fabrications such as super stretch have become so wildly popular in the fastest selling items on HSN. 
She's earned the title Jean Queen at HSN with celebrities like Kirsty Alley singing her praise. Welcome, Diane. Hello, Diane. Oh, uh, you might want to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. How oh, does hi. that work? Oh, look at that. Technology. I think I'm technical. <laughs> well, so excited to have you here again, Diane, um, and loving wow. the, the Christmas ornaments and background. <laughs> Long story. I can explain that. Um, so in 2013, you had your first book published, Good Genes. And it was an autobiography written and dedicated to the baby boomer generation. Um, so in this book, you discuss 10 secrets for aging ages, uh, agelessly. <laughs> and so your new book, Too Young yeah. to Be Old, How to Stay Vibrant and Visible at Any Age is coming out yeah. soon. Please tell us more. So here's what motivated it, honestly, Lon. Um, I always like to piggyback on what I've learned. So one thing that I never, ever thought of was being on television, which I've now been on for 30 years. And I hope that I learned my communication skills well, which translated into writing. And this was a journey I will never forget. Uh, Christmas Eve of 2017, I went to get a sonogram and... The woman sort of ran out of the room afterwards and said, just wait here. Uh, about an hour later, another woman rushed in and said, I bet you're wondering why I waited so long to come see you. And I thought, okay, why? She said, because it's hopeless. You've got cancer everywhere. That was Christmas Eve. And long story I called a good friend of mine, my co-author, Jan Tuckwood, and said, doesn't look good, doesn't sound good, but you know what? I want to make it a journey. Everyone can go on with me because I'm not going to waste one tear or any self-pity. I'm going to see this as a new career, saving my life. And Jan and I went through it, and luckily, I had incredible medical, and I came out fine. And, but along the way, and many of you out there may have gone through the same thing with breast cancer or the likes of, you start to realize what a miracle life is. And so I ask myself this question all the time. I'm now bordering on 78 years old, so I'm getting up there towards 80. Why aren't we respected more? Why aren't we used for the skills that we've developed all our lives? Whether you've been a mom or you've been a CEO or you've been a fashion designer like myself, why are we devalued as our numbers increase? And that also includes the number of people over 55 in this country, we are now a graying nation. We will very soon, I believe in four or five years, be the majority of America. And what is there for us? That's how I came to develop my brand, DG2. I became a middle-aged, overweight, not so happy about my shape anymore woman at 58. And I couldn't find anything that fit. So. I had a light bulb moment at 59 years old. And the light bulb moment was, why don't you develop a gene for yourself? And once I wore it, I thought, I feel sexy again. I feel relevant again. I feel in the mainstream and the flow of society again. Wouldn't millions of women feel that way? Well, guess what? Shot up to one hundred million dollars a year of quite frankly middle-aged baby boomer jeans being sold and then we expanded and the bottom line is i've remained number one even through breast cancer even into my 77th year i've set all sales records and i say this to you if I hadn't already been under contract at the age of 58, nobody would have listened to me. 
even that current business partner I had then, I said, I've got an idea and something just tells me in my gut, this is huge. I created a gene for my body, big tummy, big waist, flat behind. Yeah, you guys all know the story. And I think we could sell millions of them. And you wanna know what my middle-aged partner said? He said, who wants to see a tight gene on a fat old chick? And I thought, okay, that's it. Had enough, gonna do it. So I had a chance. I went on there at, they gave me like half an hour, 5 a.m. on a freezing Friday morning uh, in February. And we sold 5,000 pair of those jeans that no one had ever seen before. No one had worn, there wasn't one review at 5 a.m. in the morning. And it was history, but the truth is, I went against every societal truth. I'm in two industries, visual, television, and fashion that are completely ageophobic and totally youth obsessed. And if I hadn't already been within a contract, nobody would ever have given me a chance. You know, as it was, I could tell you, every contemporary of mine, except Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, they weren't designing anymore at 58 years old. And me, even though I've had successes, I was still looking for that big break. And I will tell you what, now when I look back and I think what a miracle it is and how we've remained number one for a third of a century, almost 30 years, I have to say to myself, would this have happened to me if I had just been on the streets pounding the pavement saying, hey, uh, yeah, I, I know I'm almost 60 years old and I know there's no other designers who are 60 years old unless they're legends already, but I've got this idea and I really believe in it. Nobody would have funded me. So looking back and never wanting to rest on my laurels and knowing that I have beat against every stupid wall of ageism, I say this to you, it's never too late to be creative. It is never too late to stop saying I'm too old. You are not too old. I wanna read some facts for you. If you live to be 75 today, you got a pretty clear ch chance and shot at hitting 100. This is your third act. Use your time wisely. These are the most precious years. These are the years where we really realize what a privilege it's been to be alive this long. When I think of what I see on television that represents age, I think age equals sick, age equals disease, age equals weakness, age equals powerless, age equals less than, Age equals sad, decline, and finally, age equals game over. Do you know I had my best sales year ever last year at the age of 76? I've been turned 77. It ain't over till it's over if you don't say it's over. And truthfully, another scientific fact, 70-year-olds, that is the happiest decade, medically speaking, of most people's lives. So the book also has 25 rules in it for girls who hate rules. Rules about not only aging, but acknowledging where you're at. You know, there's a commercial on cable television. And I, I think it, it's for something like Medicare or Medicaid. And a woman comes out and says, oh, I'm at a certain age, but Numbers unlisted, my numbers listed. I want everyone to know I'm 77. I want everyone to know I'm still fascinated. And I want everyone to know I could have stayed in teleretailing forever. And I thought to myself, you know what? You were always 
an adventurer, Diane. You were so brave in your youth. Why are you staying someplace where you're not growing? And knowing, and maybe it's a good thing as you get older, that, yeah, you're not infinite. You're not going to live forever. Use this time wisely. So you know what, Lon? I thought to myself, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to write a second book. It's going to be about aging differently. And I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. And I want to become a spokesperson for my generation. <laughs> love that. I love that. It's So two quotes come to my mind. One I actually posted today by chance. And it's, um, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. And, and I love the fact that you you basically created an industry, right? Where there was none, even though it's everyone true. was telling you, you can't. That's so powerful. And you didn't let people saying no deter you. You built your own table. Yeah. The other, the other quote that I'm reminded of is something that you recently posted on Instagram. And it's this, and, and everyone should hear this right now. Own your power or someone else will. Oh, yeah. Own your power sure. or someone else will. What does this mean to you, Diane? And how has this philosophy impacted how you live your life? You know, that that is a favorite saying, and I've got another favorite saying, which is never judge your self-worth by what other people offer you. And I'll tell you a funny story. So I was going to step back actually much sooner from Teller Retail a couple of years ago. And so I started lessening the shows and, and then it's like that Soprano thing. Just when you think you're getting out of it, they pull you back in. So they go to, and it was not HSN. It was the, the um, companies that I work with. Uh, made me an offer to stay at about one third of what I was earning just six months before. And I thought to myself, this is ageism. I mean, I'm not worth any less. Actually, if you're asking me to stay, I must be worth more. So to me, own your own power and know your worth are the same thing. And, you know, I was at um, a seminar for beauty recently. I was invited. It was a very small, tight, very high-end group. And I was 25 years older than anybody else there. And one of the women actually said to me, why do you care anymore? And I thought, oh, my God. I'll never stop caring. I'll never stop trying to be better to break the mold, ladies, you're no less powerful because your numbers add up to a bigger total in the years. As a matter of fact, perhaps more powerful, but you've got to own your power and you've got to display that to people. So very bravely, when I was offered one third of what I'd literally been offered to work from a year before, um, I said no. And that was the bravest thing I ever did in my life. I could have stayed in a comfort zone um, for the rest of my life as long as I was physically able. But guess what? That's not me. For a girl like me, playing it safe is probably the most dangerous thing you can do because you really lose the appetite for life. I am dedicated to make my third act, the last third of my life, the grand finale. The I see my life as a Broadway musical, and this is where the big song comes in, and the romance happens. And you know what? Learn to love yourself. Learn to forgive yourself for getting old. So many of us get angry. It's like, oh, I can't deal with my hair anymore, or look at my body, or whatever. Uh-uh. Life's a miracle. I know because I came back from stage three breast cancer and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate my health today and the fact that 
I'm excited about my next step in life. And I think that excitement is the bridge that builds year upon year. And I will not let ageism stop me. If I don't find the door in the brick wall, I'll pound down that wall, but I will get to my next step in life as you know what, if it doesn't cost you anything, uh, but could turn out to be the biggest thing that ever happened to you, why not take the chance? And on top of it all, you know, it is never game over. So I, I would love to see images on TV and in the press that are not, I mean, my God, all I ever see my generation doing on cable television is taking some new drug for some <laughs> horrific disease. I worth so much more than that. So I hope you'll come join me on Instagram and Facebook. And the book is funny. I'm pretty self-deprecating. The book and is flavorful. The book has great tips and, and all kinds of stuff that I adopted recently, like really eating specifically for my health, whatever it is. And now I'm fascinated. I'm learning all this stuff about cooking, stir fry and getting creative. I make life a fun game. I make challenges like I'm in competition with myself and who's going to win the better half of me or the worst half of me. So however you do it, you know what? Get on board and do it. It is priceless just to, to, to know your power, to own your power at this age. It's a little bit lonely. That's why I need all of you to come on board, but it is potent. Let me tell you. I love that. And for folks who are watching this right now, you could pre-order the book right now on Amazon. So go to Amazon. Once you get the book and you're able to read it, make sure you also leave a review because that's how oh, you please. tell the algorithms to, you know, show this book because people need to be reading this book. So if you can um, do it while I'm on the phone with you, go to Amazon or whatever your preferred bookseller is, pre-order the book. It's going to be out at the end of November, and I know it's going to be inspiring. And it's I have goosebumps right now. I don't know how you guys feel, but I am so inspired. Um, it's such a paradigm shift, Diane, because, you know, your excitement for your third act in your, your late 70s is so contagious. And I would say 99% of people, as they get older, it's like, it's too late. I'm too t there's there's not that excitement and your excitement is so freaking contagious. I want to show something okay. to the group real quick. This is something you posted on Instagram just to let the folks on this call know what a badass you are. I'm going to read it. 76 years on this earth, 200 dresses sold to share, 33 months dancing at Studio 54, 28 years on TV <laughs> at HSN. 40 weeks fighting cancer, 19 million genes sold, one first day on Instagram. So I, I guess that was the day one of your Instagram, yeah. right? Yeah. The life you've lived is so amazing. Like, so dresses to share. And I mean, you know, I didn't even give the whole background of like, you know, you, you're, you're being kind of a fashion innovator in San Francisco, basically, you know, hanging out with all these rock stars in your 20s and 30s. But the fact that you're even more excited, even though you probably had one of the most amazing early, you know, first half, that you're so excited about your third act. That, oh, I mean, yeah. That's so inspiring. You know, um, you got to work it, right? You can't just sit back. But the real truth is, and the real shame of it is, if you can't see it, you can't be it. And who do we see out there? Every celebrity. I mean, the oldest celebrities are like 40 years old. We're invisible. This is all wrong. We were the generation, that baby boomer generation that really paved the way for all sorts of freedoms and innovations. You know, there's um, 
One of my favorite quotes, Juan, is from an idol of mine, Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. And he said, you know, life's a funny thing. Nobody wants to grow old, but nobody wants to die young. So what do you do? Make your third act your best act. <laughs> I love that. Um, so question, what yes. did you wish you knew when you were younger that you know now? I wish I knew I was never going to starve to death. I left home as a teenager without a penny. Uh, there was no other way I could do it. I could not be me unless I really broke free. And for a huge part of my life, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to starve to death. Oh my God, oh my God. Um, and I look back now and see that my own insecurities really drove a lot of negativity into my life. And interestingly enough, when I got the diagnosis for breast cancer, I had to go into the office and announce it to my staff and everybody started crying. And I said, no, no, no. I said, you're all going out in the hallway and cry as much as you want to, but I'm not going to shed a tear. I can't waste the energy. I can't put one ounce of negativity into this situation. I've been given a challenge. I'm going to reach a challenge. And interestingly enough, the surgeon I had, very famous Dr. Alyssa Port, said to me, women like you do great. You're survivors. She said, you have, pardon my language, quote, busted your butt your whole life, Diane, designing. She said, you know how to play this cancer game. You just haven't played it yet. Here you are. So that taught me a lot. So I think if I had been younger and I would have said to myself all along the way, of course, I'm going to survive. Of course, I believe in my talent. You know, that is another really amazing thing. You're in two industries, television and fashion that are both based on talent, but the guys with the money in their pockets and their suit pockets, talent's too ephemeral. They don't believe in it at all. And the minute they get a hold of your name, the first thing they want to do is smash it down and control it like holding a butterfly too tight in your hand and crushing it. So um, I was very, very happy to get my, to, to work hard enough and just get into a situation where I had the independence. And now, yeah, I definitely have my moments where it's like, are you crazy? You left an industry where you're a legend and you could just sail out to do something totally new, like be a spokesperson for what I like to call my Silverellas, all my Silverella <laughs> ladies. Hell yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be true to me. So if I had to say one thing to anybody out there who's terrified of aging, which is 99.9% .9 of everybody, I would say, stay true to yourself. You can never go wrong down the highway of life. I love that. Um, so I know we talked earlier about you still caring about how you look, the next chapter of your life, et cetera, et cetera. However, I feel like the difference between people who live their full authentic life and people who don't is this point where they stop giving a shit what other people think. Yeah. Right. Where they yeah. stop caring what other people thinks of, oh, I, you know, I'm too old for this, or what are they gonna think? Or, well, you know, I can't do this because at what age did you stop caring what other people thought of you? Well, there was split. You know, when you're on television, you get you, a lot of people are critics. So that was always um you're always hearing what other people think of you on TV. However, I think when I turned, I became a widow. I gained about a hundred pounds because my husband had had colon cancer, did not survive and I, I couldn't eat. So I sort of went down to like 98 pounds. And then after he died, Food became my companion. I'm an emotional leader. I shot up to 200 pounds. And I heard plenty from all the people that were watching me on TV, like, 
Diane, you're splitting out of your seams. I hadn't invented the gene yet. I couldn't find a gene that fit my body. And um, I think when I invented that gene, went out and bought some denim and had the ladies in my sewing room take my measurements, my waist, my stomach, everything, put this gene together. And I walked out on the street. I'll never forget it. And I was walking down 34th Street in Manhattan to work. And there were two Con Ed guys in a tunnel with a ladder. And one of them was pretty cute and young. And he looked up and looked at me and said, hey, lady, you got it going. I thought, okay, I don't care what anybody says. Because I had no supporters for a baby boomer gene. It was like, what are you, crazy? 20-year-olds wear jeans. Well, in retrospect, I think we became the only brand in America that actually said, yeah, you, all you young girls, you've got 10 million brands. Us old girls, now we've got DG. Now we've got Diane Gilman. And I played everything off of that. I, try, I was my own fit model. I, I did what I needed to do. And all along the way, it was, whatever backer financial people I had, it was, we want a younger audience. And we don't understand why you're not going after 30 year olds, 30 year olds. And it's, you know what? Bye. I'm not going after you anymore. I found that if you are looking for someone that believes in you, good luck. Only one thing counts. Believe in yourself. No matter what age you are. Remember, if you're up around it where I am, 77, I got a good shot of being 100 and I'm going to work really hard for that. I want to stick around for a while, but more than that, I want to do something bigger. I want to do something lasting. I know how difficult it is to age as a female. I want to make it easier for every female around me and ages below me to know that it's pretty grand up here from my point of view. I love that. Um, I'm going to read some of the comments. Uh, there's a really an active, okay. uh, um, in the comments, Tamira, I don't think ageism or for that matter, sexism or any ism is a true problem. I think it's a bastardized value system that values power, profits and material uh, uh, possessions over learning, development, growth and doing good uh, to others. Totally uh, agree with that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to questions in a second, but I I want to kind of spotlight Jan, who who's read your book. My and fabulous. She, she, yes. My yes, co-author. Jan. And she talks about, um, you know, escaping your abusive family situation. So can you, because, I mean, you've lived a fabulous life. So, and, and you talked about it the last time we interviewed as you as well. But for the folks who are kind of new for, you know, uh, to today's call, just to, for them to kind of know that you didn't have it easy, you didn't have it put on a silver plate, right? Can you kind of talk about your previous yeah, experience? Yeah. I'll do that very it. quickly. So um, I'm first born Ukrainian. My parents came over from Poland and Ukraine at about at around uh, 1904. And their whole life was shadowed by the depression. My mother went from being a debutante to being a chambermaid when they had to, in 1929, turn their mansion into a transient boarding house. She became chambermaid. My mother, my grandmother became the cook. My grandfather became the super. And um, so when, as a little girl, maybe two and a half, three, I wanted to be a designer. I wanted to learn how to sew. I wanted, I already knew exactly what I wanted to do. It, the battles began. I was not going to wind up being a seamstress. My mother had to sew all the clothing for her seven brothers. They couldn't afford ready-made clothing. So um, the household was also very violent. I actually used to have to wait until they went to sleep, tiptoe in the hallway, 
take out the Singer sewing machine. This is true story. Put it under my bed, no lights on. Use one hand as the foot pedal, the other hand to guide the fabric. And I would make these intricate little dresses for my dolls, taught myself to sew. I found out when I was 50 years old, this will tell you my, the atmosphere in my house, that I had received a full four-year scholarship to the Sorbonne for language and fashion. And my parents burnt the letter because they didn't want me doing it. So um, I left home with like 15 cents in my pocket. And I led a rock and roll life for years, opened a store called I'm a Hog for You, Baby, which we thought was the first rock and roll song ever recorded. Uh, so all of my life, I've fought against restriction. I've tried to extend myself and understand the depths of my talent. But one thing for sure, talent could be anything. It could be you bake the best gingerbread in in your little town and maybe you want to go sell them at some artisanal bakery. Whatever you do, believe in yourself. Don't wait for other people to do it. And you know what? That belief, if it's strong enough, will be contagious and you'll have a whole group of people who understand your mission. And I'm a girl with a purpose. I've led a completely purpose-driven life. So everybody says, oh, Diane, you've been working since you were nine years old. Give it up, relax. I don't want to give it up. I want to take every skill I have, maybe the prestige I have from my career, a fully working brain at this point, and the feeling that I have got something big to accomplish with the rest of my years and make it happen. So here I am again with everybody saying, oh, Diane, why don't you just kick back and relax? Uh, no, not going to happen. Mm -mm. I love that. And um, it, it kind of, you know, if you think about children when they're younger, they want to be astronauts. They want to be artists. They want to be basketball like they have such big dreams right and then as we get older and we're told by society oh you can't do that that's not realistic yeah and like in the beginning i asked the group in the live zoom audience what do you want to be if age wasn't a factor they wanted to start their own business they wanted to be you know xyz and what you're saying is it's not too late it's not too late Go i never use it. that word i never say it's too late I never say I'm too old. I don't, that is not in my language. Get rid of it and get proactive. Because one thing for sure, I always see myself as like a vintage Thunderbird or something. You can't drive it the way you drive a, a regular old car today. You got to baby it. You got to take care of it. Take care of yourselves. Make it a challenge. Make it a goal and a purpose that you can achieve and feel good about yourselves. I mean, after cancer, I really reined it in how I ate, how I drank, how I, um, the hours I kept. And because I want this old body to be around for a while and be cruising and working. And, and so I hope I get this privilege. I hope that the message I gave with DG2, which was, it's never too late to be a D cool girl. Diane, I'm going to stop you because Extend. you're already doing it. Oh, okay. it, it is already happening because you have inspired <laughs> so many people, millions of women, men as well. So it's already happening. So I, I just want to stop you there. Thank I you. want to read some of the quotes uh, from the folks who are uh, at, uh, in attendance today. Diane, you are inspirational, affirming, reassuring, and amazing. Um, uh, Mary says, I am so glad Diane will be the champion for us aging ladies. Yay. I can't wait Yay. to see what you will accomplish. Um, Tamara, brilliant truth. I want to take the gifts I have and use them. Um, 
and a lot of folks, I needed this today. You've, you're inspiring the folks who are on this call. Um, we have a question from Denley McIntosh. Denley, do you want to unmute and ask your question, or do you want me to ask it for you? Denley? Uh, yeah, I guess I could. I yeah. could. I could. Uh, so, yeah, Diane, thank you for sharing uh, your story. I think. My pleasure. And I know it. it I don't know how many men are on, on this uh, because I, when it comes to sometimes these kind of questions, these topics, men kind of absolve themselves. And I and I'm I'm married and about 20 years, and I figure it's always good to kind of hear what uh, women are saying. And also, men obviously share concerns about aging as well. So oh yeah, to say, uh, and I guess this is kind of related to to you and and your your late husband. And sorry to to hear the story that he's gone through and, and the pain and, uh, and transitioning. Uh, I was just wondering, how did that, how did that shape you in this sort of reckless abandon to be who you are? Uh, how did that passing shape who you are today and your attitude to just live your all and your best? Just curious about that. Great question. Thanks. Danley. I think I, I, you know, Danley, I think um, that that was a man that I was privileged to live with for 20 years because he always used to say to me, you know, people treat you like a plow horse, but you are a racehorse. You are a champion. He saw me. He saw what was important to me, that my talent and using it and fulfilling it. For me, designing was like breathing air. I had to do it. So I had to be with somebody who was almost willing to be the power behind the throne rather than the power with the woman behind the throne. And when he was so supportive of me and I had such a crazy childhood with my father, um, it broke me for many years. I, I remember right after he passed away, um, walking down a street in Manhattan and looking at a group of people who were having a really good time and laughing and thinking, how long has it been since I've laughed? A year, two years? I was primary caregiver. I think it set me up to be braver, tougher, and possibly more single-minded. I think that you would find that most people like me that are born to do something, that are born with a dream and and uh, fulfill it. We, we feel sometimes very, very isolated because everybody else wants to go out and play and vacation. And no, I never wanted to do any of that. I wanted to work. I worked seven days a week. And, you know, I have to tell you, looking back on that, I think my husband would have been really proud of me. I think he would have been amazed at the pragmatic attitude I took with cancer because when he had cancer and he passed in 1997, there was, there were no cures. If, if you got, if you were cured, it was pure karma and luck. So I think of him always. And, um, I think of one thing he had to say, because I said, you know, you're everything to me and you're so wise and you're always figuring out how I'm going to get from A to B. What will I do without you? And he said, we've had a million conversations and said a million thoughts to one another. It's all there in the library on, of your brain. I'll always have an answer for you and I'll never leave you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry You're about that. You're gonna make me cry, Diane. Stop. <laughs> he was great. He was truly, he was truly unique and a very talented guy himself. And after that, and after being the sole caregiver to him for seven years of brutal cancer, I just, I thought I've got to do something. What has never hurt me in my life? And you know what? It was my talent because I always nurtured my talent and took care of it and loved it and felt so privileged to have it. And I thought, I am going to micro and macro focus on developing that talent even further. So even in his own way of leaving the physical plane, 
he set me up to be the success I became. Oh, Thank you. Lovely. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So some quotes, uh, some uh, comments in the chat. Um, Denley, thank you for your openness and vulnerability. I know your husband would appreciate your boldness and service to others, especially for more seasoned women. And this has been truly inspirational, gave me the true uh, burst of renewed energy I've been seeking. Andrew, Great. inspiring. Thank you, for sh Diane, for sharing. Your passion is inspirational. I agree with Anne. This book is going to be amazing. So right now, as we speak, buy the book, pre-order it for your friends, for other you know women that should be reading this right now. Um, Rosia, oh my God, you are amazing, inspirational. I'm ordering my book Thank now. You. Thank and you. Um, if you guys want to watch this, uh, we have it posted on YouTube, on LinkedIn, et cetera. So feel free to, uh, you know, uh, go on the Community of Seven page if you want to watch this again, because I know I will be watching this on repeat because Diane inspires me so much. Um, oh, Carolyn wow. just ordered her book. Yeah, um, thank you. So, um, and Cree has a comment. I love your approach to cancer. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I felt um, that's when I stopped caring about what other people thought. However, it was not until recently that I started on my own path to living out some of my dreams. You're very inspirational and a reminder that I am not too old to live out my dreams. Never, never. I love this. No, that, um, no, just age is not a factor. I love this. Does anyone have, um, I might have room for one more question. If not, I'm going to ask my question. Anyone, you can just unmute and ask your question. Otherwise, I'm going to ask uh, Diane a question. Okay. So the final question I have for you, Diane, what's the one piece of advice? that you would want to give everyone who's watching this right now, the one piece of advice that you think will kind of, you know, that they need to hear. Tune out everything except what's in your heart. You may have children who say, oh, mom, come on, don't strain yourself. You've got a heart condition, you've, you've got, uh, community around you in church that wants you to be a certain way or tune it all out. It's your life. It's a privilege to be alive. And I don't know that I've ever seen life as more beautiful and more poignant. Maybe it's that whole thing of you go through a good meal, but you really love dessert and the dessert is like, down to one spoonful left and that's the best part of the whole meal see your life that way don't let others limit you people are scared they're scared of other people's talent they're scared of other people's vision because it's not their own and fall out and do what you know you really want to do you're in charge it's your life. Love that. Okay, final, final question. Besides buying your book, Too Young to Be Old, on Amazon <laughs> right now, and after you get the book, reviewing it, reviewing it, okay, um, how else can we help? Tell us where we can find you, uh, anything else we should, uh, the, the folks on this call should know or watching on live stream. I have my own website. You can go to thedianegilman.com and you'll see Instagram, TikTok. Don't get lost in the kitten videos. I do. Um, Facebook and my own website. And my website will become very active with the book, but also giving tips for just, you know, I think the hardest thing of, of all about being older, it's probably like if you are in a wheelchair trying to live in a house, a two-story house that doesn't take anything like a wheelchair into account. That's a little bit what being 77 is like. No, I can't run a marathon anymore, okay? But I can still think, I can still create with my heart, I can still enjoy life and find inspiration. So I would honestly say, love the moment you're in. Love the decade you're serving right now. And just know there's a lot out there waiting for you. And I'm going to fight for all you guys. That's what I'm about. 
I love that. Okay, so you guys know the deal, you regulars. Turn on your videos right now, Who, whoever's on Zoom. Uh, unmute yourself right now because Diane deserves a round of applause and we need to see your faces. Aww. So I don't oh, care how shy you yeah. are. Turn on your video. Hi, Chan. Hi, Chan. Come on, oh, round thank of applause, you, Diane. She deserves it. Thank you, Lon. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined on the live Zoom audience. I love seeing your beautiful faces. Diane is so inspiring. Make sure you buy her book. Thank you for the folks who watched this on live stream on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. If you want to watch this on repeat, go to YouTube, search, search for it or on any of the uh, social media channels. That's it. Once again, round of applause. Thank you, Diane. This was fabulous. Thank you all so, so much. <laughs> Thanks so much, Thank everyone, you. for joining. Bye-bye. <laughs>